Welcome to our second episode of Motor and Foul News on YouTube. And this time we're talking about how many could actually switch to rear-wheel drive, and it's a shocking concept. For over six decades, many has been defined by front-wheel drive, and you know it's since the very first moments of the brand and Sir Alec Izagonis sketching out the original Mini, it's been linked to front-wheel drive and, quite frankly, the revolution that followed it. Uh, you know, the car was designed for one purpose originally, maximum efficiency in a small package, and turning the engine sideways and allowing front-wheel drive to spin off that engine kept all the mechanicals up front allowing for the car to be really uh, spacious, surprisingly, despite its small size. And, you know, the byproduct of that was pushing the wheels out to the four corners, tucking, you know, like I said, the engine sideways, putting power to the front wheels, and it made it nimble and fun to drive. That was just a side effect of, of that layout. But that side effect changed the automotive world in a lot of ways. Uh, and, and so, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, of course, supported many moving into more of a performance category at times. Um, you know, it's uh, gone on to win the, the Monte Carlo Rally numerous times, and it gives even modern minis that feeling of pulling out of corners on rails. And, and it's a, really a core experience of, of minis to this day. But now as many moves towards an all-electric future, that iconic formula could be changing. And it could be changing on perhaps the entire model range of electric minis, or at the very least, initially for the countrymen. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but so why? That's that's the big question. At the heart of the shift is BMW's all new Gen 6 battery and motor technology. Gen 6 is an architecture that BMW uh, is bringing out later this year with its iX3, and it's going to underpin all BMWs. And of course, all minis that are at the very least capable of being uh, capable of leveraging the Gen 6 architecture. Um, it's unclear if the smaller minis, the Cooper, will, I mean, quite frankly, be large enough to uh, leverage this architecture. Um, we certainly hope so because I think it, it, it would bode well for those cars. But at the very least, we know that cars like the Countryman will for sure. And so, Okay, great. So if it's at least the next electric countryman, what does that mean? Well, that means that that car, if it does sit on this architecture, will be either rear-wheel drive in its sort of base models or all-wheel drive in its higher sort of spec models like an S or a JCW. Um, so why is that? So let's let's talk about why that is and why it might not be a bad thing. And I think that's the sort of twist here. Uh, that a lot of people aren't really discussing. So for one, motor placement and drivetrain packaging. So as I mentioned, the sixth gen electric drive system exclusively uses uh, excited synchronous motors, EESM, which have an integrated gearbox. This specific motor gearbox unit is designed to sit between the rear wheels, not the front. So why does this matter? Unlike traditional front wheel drive layouts, which require motors to be positioned transversely up front, uh, BMW's EESM is longitudinal and aligned with the rear axle. This means there will be no front mounted variant. Since BMW only offers this motor configuration for rear placement, there is no front wheel drive option, period. Now they are gonna offer a smaller motor that would work in concert with that rear motor. Um, that would, of course, allow for all wheel drive and that all wheel drive is something that would, like I said, be optional or standard on many of the higher configurations. Why has BMW made this choice? The new A-class platform, is engineered exclusive, exclusively for rear wheel drive and all wheel drive setups, as I mentioned. And this follows a long standing preference by BMW for a rear driven platform, especially for performance oriented vehicles. So, why would rear wheel drive or rear wheel biased all wheel drive be preferred over front wheel drive? BMW has always leaned towards rear wheel drive for better weight distribution and driving dynamics, given that the, the these new generation electric BMWs will support every, anything. I should say the new generation architecture will support everything from minis to full-size BMWs. Standardizing rear-wheel drive as the base configuration just simplifies development. And ultimately, it improves also handling at the limit. Um, if anybody's tracked minis out there, you'll know what I mean. They are a blast. And the performance is, I'd say, very, very accessible. But at their limit, they are ultimately front-wheel drive cars inherently unbalanced. And they will, unless you are a pro at liftoff oversteer, they will understeer into corners. 
So mirroring BMW's approach with its traditional models, if a car needs all-wheel drive, BMW simply adds that second motor up front. Uh, but like I said, it's never a front-wheel drive first design. And this approach would keep many single motor variants rear-wheel drive, which is really kind of fascinating when you think about it. So let's talk about efficiency and performance for a second. BMW's decision here really is interesting. With rear-wheel drive, there's a better weight distribution. Rear-wheel drive places the heavy motor on the rear axle, helping balance weight, especially in dynamic scenarios, as I mentioned. This also eliminates torque steer. In high-powered EVs, front-wheel drive can struggle with traction, especially under hard acceleration. This is especially true with the new J01 and J05 JCW models. Rear-wheel drive simply eliminates this issue. Additionally, rear-wheel drive also creates more engaging handling as it separates the front steering from the front wheels, of course, or right, just to say from, on the front wheels, from power delivery, which is predominantly the rear wheels in all-wheel drive or only the rear wheels in rear-wheel drive. This would give many a more agile go-kart-like feel, which I know sounds crazy, uh, but it would be a more balanced go-kart feel than, than today. But like I said, it would change that characteristic of kind of power pulling you out of the corner that has become such a hallmark of powerful front-wheel drive cars. And then finally, this is about simplifying platform development. By committing to a single drivetrain configuration, BMW and Mini can streamline development, reduce costs, and improve modularity. I know that's not exciting stuff, but these type of moves allow Mini to really continue to exist, uh, allowing it to kind of ride shotgun with, with BMW and share development costs allows the brand to, to sit at a lower uh, sort of unit sold annually and still perhaps be profitable. Um, it also doesn't hurt to be aligned with a car company like BMW, whose engineering standards are very high and has a history of really great performance cars. So that's a very quick look at why many might be moving to rear-wheel drive, um, or as I mentioned, all-wheel drive with a bias towards rear-wheel drive, and, and what it could mean for the brand. As I mentioned, this looks to be very, very certain at this point for the countrymen, the next generation countrymen, which we'll likely see at the end of this decade. The smaller Cooper, it's unclear. The smaller Aceman, again, unclear. Um, but we can imagine BMW attempting to do the same thing there, of course, to simplify platforms and uh, really sort of, from a mini perspective, kind of draft behind BMW's engineering spend on those cars. So. A pretty interesting topic. Uh, please leave us some comments uh, if you have thoughts, because I know this is going to ruffle some feathers of a lot of mini fans out there, and it may excite some as well. Um, as always, please subscribe. We have a lot more news coming. Give us a like. It helps us a lot, and we will see you soon.